This week, three sides of the coin, we rename ourselves to two sides of the coin. Yeah, because we kind of hinted at it last week. No Tommy. And Lisa's just not reliable enough to counter as a third side. So we are now two sides of the coin. Thank you, Ace. That was a great song. And uh, we've got a couple guests joining us this week talking about rock bands. We got Stacy and Sean from the band Crashing Wayward joining us this week. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. Guess what? It's the two that started this. It's the two that mattered. The song's called Two Sides of the Coin for a fucking it, reason. That's true. We're renaming the show <laughs> to Two Sides of the Coin. We're no longer Three Sides of the Coin because we can't reliably have a third side. It's been you and I for, for what, since, I don't know, late 90s maybe? So, I so <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Ace, thank you. Two Sides of the Coin, that's this show. <laughs> oh. um, all right, so before we get into this week's guest, last week's absolute Craptastic, stink fest, <laughs> train wreck of a show. Guess Horrible. What? A lot of people are loving it. I can't believe it. I, I saw some of the. I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. So, so because Ed isn't here, and even if Ooh. he is here, he doesn't do his job. I'm going to read a few comments off of YouTube about um, last week's show. Episode 422, Kiss Off the Soundboard, What Future Recordings We Would Like to See. That was sort of what the topic was supposed to be, but I don't know what the hell happened. So first comment comes from, uh, let's see here. Uh, Comes from Henry Chin. As one of the few listeners, I would love to hear the audio from Binghamton, New York show that Mark St. John played the whole show. So would I. That was one of them we suggested. Um, Hans Christensen, thank you for making me smile again and again. Greetings from Denmark. Love you guys, especially when you don't have guests. Gee, you glutton for fucking punishment. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, wow. I didn't see this one, but we'll read this. Um, John Patterson. Wow. Wow. Three sides and its participants have relegated themselves to endorsing the current wave of shit bootleg offerings for KISS at the hands of locked down opportunists. A podcast which has always religiously endorsed only official KISS related products. What the fuck? Better to explain and give examples of the current crop of unofficial product that is being peddled as legit merchandise to the real fans. John, this isn't a bootleg. Okay, this is legit. This is a legit release coming out from Kiss and Universal. It's a live record. I don't know, you know, it's as legit as a live two, a live, a live three, live in Vegas, Symphony. It's legit. Um, Let's see. Uh, One guy goes, 35 minutes in that's when the discussion starts jesus who's got 35 minutes to waste (laughs) um let's see if it was from tim farley if it wasn't for lisa i wouldn't have watched listen if it wasn't for lisa we would have left too amen brother um okay dennis okay i'm gonna say what other guys are afraid to Please, can we ever see Lisa seriously naked like Penthouse or Hustler magazine style? <laughs> Do the carpet, does the carpet. And, and, and just, just so you know, Dennis, we sent the comment to Lisa and she had yes. a good chuckle over that. Um, let's see. Matthew, haha, I noticed a lot of longer two hour ish three sides episodes lately. So I was excited to see this was only one hour and 11 minutes. So far, I'm 35 ish minutes into this, and the actual discussion hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Look, um, 
another guy. This is fucking an hour and 11 minutes. You ain't getting back (laughs) here. Here, Michael, any suggestions on how I can get the hour and 11 minutes and 58 seconds of my life back? Holy smoke. That was brutal. Horrible. Um, This from John Davis. This show is like some other things in life. The worst is still great. Um, I'm glad you think so. (laughs) I don't, I'm sorry. I can't pronounce this D G uh, D can't dead, dead guy. Yes. Dead guy. <laughs> the best part was when I woke up and realized that the show was over the best one hour nap ever. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It was a brutal show, but we love the fact that, Hey, some of you actually just love the discussion. Some of you saw the humor and everything we were doing other people. I don't know. Don't, get so riled up this is a legit kiss product this isn't a bootleg that we're endorsing all right it's not like kiss is going to youtube stealing the video that somebody else filmed and just releasing that video kiss has a soundboard recording of this that's what they're releasing okay <laughs> god it's an official fucking universal release what do you want to you know what are you gonna do so. yeah i mean it, yeah it's it's not like they they hit up uh Mark Cicchini in Japan and said, hey, we saw you did an audio recording, you know, under your jacket. Could you give us a cassette tape? We want to release it. That's not what this is. It's true. It's, true. Uh, it, it, it's so funny how some people just, I don't, don't get it. Don't understand. Maybe they don't want to. I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. It's like, it's you know the, the weird recording was is is the band hasn't officially put anything on their website about it. Yet. Nope, nope. It ha- again. This hasn't officially been announced, but it is an official release. People, okay. I I, I gotta admit, it's just kind of it's kind of weird. This was it uh, as a Barbarino used to say, it's so weird. It's you so know weird. that. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, that, I I suspect something got released earlier than it's supposed to. I mean. Yeah, I've seen this happen where the distributor gets the information put up on target.com before everything was secured and it shouldn't have gone up. And once it got up, the fans got wind of everything and now they know everything. And now the band and the record label are chasing getting this information up as quickly and accurately as possible. It happens. It happens. So it's coming, people. Don't worry. At some point in time, this will officially be announced, and you hopefully not think this is just a crap ass. Well, you know what? Uh, they they put the destroy or the, not the the shout it out loud single out. I guess that already sold out. Sold out. That was a yeah, seven inch single. Yeah, and then they got uh, you know this coming out and uh, uh, hold tight, people. There's more coming um, later this year. So, you what you're really gonna dig. So. Um, yeah. So well, anyway, can... anyway, we've got uh, a couple guests joining us this week. Since we don't have a couple hosts joining us, we went and got a couple guests to join two sides of the coin this and by, week. And, and by the way, guys, just to let you know ahead of time, not a ton of kiss talk, but some great rock and roll talk. So it, um... it is. You know what? It kind of reminded me of the the recent episode we did with Johnny O'Neill, where you know we we had him share his opening up for kiss on the creatures tour but that was sort of the extent of it the rest of it was a great rock and roll discussion and this is very much like that we're 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 joined by uh stacy and sean from the band crashing wayward and stacy you might know from well he, he we we won't spill everything but he was in rocks gang he was in la guns um, Sean is involved with, uh, Kiss Night in Vegas. So you might know him from that. Um, just some going, cool. oh, there is Kiss sprinkled throughout oh, it. There, too, there, so. No, there definitely is Kiss stuff sprinkled throughout, but there's just a lot of great band talk, kind of what's going on here. Talking about being in a band and recording and rehearsing and losing lead singers and changing band names and, you know, all that stuff that goes with it. So, I found it fascinating. Uh, You know, here's what I would say. If you found the Johnny O'Neill episode really good, you're going to love this one as well. Cool. So let it roll. Sean and Stacy from Crashing Wayward. 
Want to get your official three sides of the coin logo and shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. Hey, Three Sides World, I want to welcome a couple special guests joining us today. We've got Stacy David Blades and Sean McKee from Crashing Wayward. And you guys are joining us from Vegas. It's yeah. Vegas, Nevada. Vegas, yeah. Uh, it would have been smart if we got together in the same room, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, who thought, who would have thought of that? <laughs> um, Vegas, that's becoming the the new headquarters for kiss it seems like too yeah tommy and eric right tommy mm -hmm. and oh, eric. eric move here too yeah, yeah. Bruce, bruce bruce lives there uh, uh, bruce lives here. here yeah that's right yep yep so it's everybody escaping los angeles and heading to vegas yeah too many people there yeah exactly exactly nowhere to park yeah so um before we get into chat and kiss why don't I'll give each of you guys like a couple minutes here. Just fill our listeners in uh, who you are, what you've done. Assume they know nothing. Because let's keep in mind, some of our listeners are young. I mean, we've got 10-year-old, 12-year-old kids listening to us that have gotten into KISS because of their parents. So they may not have a deep rock history knowledge here. So what have you guys each done individually? And then we'll start talking collectively here. Stacy, go ahead. Uh, cool. I've been, I've been around the block a few times. Um, I got my start uh, playing piano uh, when I was nine years old, a long time ago. Um, had heavy piano training when I was 11. I started playing guitar. By the time I was 17, 18, I started playing uh, club circuit. I grew up in Toronto, Canada. Oh, okay. Um, in my early 20s, I got my uh, first big break. I joined an American band um, that was on Virgin Records uh, in Florida. So that was, a, that was a huge accomplishment because for me, I always, you know, wanted to have a career in America there was a great Canadian music uh, scene and industry, you know, but it was very limited. Oxy, wow, dude, nice. How do you Mark, just pull that out like that? Mark, you know, you know I, I, just I, a bag of tricks, like. <laughs> as soon as you said Canadian rock, I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay, Stacy, real quick, what was the yeah. band you joined? Uh, it was a band called Rock's Gang. R -O -S -S oh yeah, Gang. I love Rock's um, Gang. That first yeah. album is great. First record was really good, really good. So uh, I came in a few years after that, um, and I was in the band for probably eight years. Uh, did uh, I think four four records with them? Um, I, it just did run its course quite a bit, and um, I, I, you know, I I needed to get out of Florida. I was like, I can't live in this place anymore. Um, so I had uh, actually moved to uh, LA. I'd been going to LA for several years um, prior to that, but then my sister was living there. So um, it was like, I need to go West, you know? Um, so once I got there, I did a few things and then I was very fortunate enough to land the LA Guns gig, which I did for 10 years. And uh, those are 10 great years and did a lot of great records with that band. Um, worked with the amazing um, late great Andy Johns producer who worked with Zeppelin, Van yep. Halen, Rod Stewart, Stones. I mean, everybody legend. was a legend. Amazing, legend. So uh, he untimely passed away uh, in 2013, unfortunately. Um, and uh, in 2000, we're ready right to begin in 13, I left LA Guns and uh, then I did a few things and I had a band called uh, the modern active rock band called Electric Radio Kings, which that band turned into Crashing Wayward. So um, that band was together for about three years. Uh, we had done uh, some singles and radio campaigns, which got the band going nationally, which did well. Then we put out our own record. We got picked up by MI5 Universal. Um, we charted 
on Billboard Mainstream Rock entering at 87 with a song we redid, uh, uh, an Amy Winehouse song called Back to Black. Uh, so they got a lot of national radio play. Um, we broke the top 100 on Mainstream Billboard uh, at 87, climbed to 28. I wow. uh, held that spot for about two and a half weeks, actually. We were about to sign a huge management deal with a guy named Larry Mazur, who had managed oh, yeah. uh, the Lamb Man of God, uh, he Kiss, man Cinderella. He used to manage Kiss during the Revenge yes, era. Yes, Kiss. Yeah. There's, this is my Kiss connection. <laughs> a few. Sean's got better Kiss stories. <laughs> but... We actually, um, we actually had Larry on, on the podcast really? a few years ago. Yeah. Um, nice, you know, because, yeah. you know, super, super great guy, but in the kiss world, he's kind of overlooked. I mean, when you, when you've got managers like Bill Coin and Doc McGee, yeah. you know, those guys in the world of managers yeah. literally are huge, um, you know, and, and the revenge era, as we know, great album, great era. But it got like everything got swallowed up and spit out because of grunge. Kind you know, of, yeah. I think I think Larry's work was just kind of overshadowed, and then boom, there was the reunion. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Larry's a great guy, and then so uh, so things were really happening with that band, and you know, there been the, the band was very dysfunctional, and the singer, you know, he wanted to do it, but he didn't, and that was always a problem. And, you know, he was starting to realize he couldn't carry the band. So we had gone down to New Orleans and Houston and played two really big, big shows, the biggest shows that we've done as a band. And late that following week, we were going to probably sign with Larry. So he knew that all that was building up. And that night in Houston, after the show, later that night, he basically just kind of told everybody to F off, I quit the band. Hmm. And uh, basically, <laughs> you know, he flushed it down the toilet. So it was like, what the fuck just happened? But I look back on that now and go, whoa, what a blessing that was. And it was a relief. And I'm very grateful that that happened because if it hadn't, it wouldn't have ushered in this awesome new band, Crashing Wayward. So basically that's the long, you know, long short of it. Um, I rebuilt the band with all new guys because the band imploded. And then I actually, with this lineup, my Sean, before Sean came aboard, we played a couple of shows with that lineup as Electric Radio. Uh oh. The curse of my router. And we got Sean, <laughs> and then, you know, Peter, our singer, was like, you know, Stace, it's, you know, time to let go of the, the life raft. This is not Electric Radio Kings. It's complete opposite. So let's, let's change the name of the band. And, so, and what, uh, what, what, what inspired the name Crashing Wayward? Stacy? Stacy? Froze. <laughs> Stacy. He's frozen. He's frozen. All right, Sean, you jump in. And All right, I'll jump in here. Back. Although when that when the name change came, I, that was before me. He called me up and and said, "Hey, we're going in a different direction." You know, with him and I had done a couple of things before. He had played a kiss night before. And uh, there you go. Sorry, you're back, you Stacy. You're, yeah, you're, you're back. back. No worries. Real, real, Sean, real quick, Stacy. I was just asking you what inspired the name Crashing Wayward? Um, it kind of just came to me. You know, Pete and I were tooling around with names, and um, it just came to me. And it was like, call it universal divine, divine divinity. Uh, it kind of simplified like just this moving forward and just like abandoning everything. Literally. So, abandoning everything. so uh, you know, when I said, Hey Pete, what do you think of crashing away? He goes, that's it. That's a band. I said, well, don't you want to, should we ask everybody what they think about it? No, nope, just <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I had to change the name of the band lately too because the old singer from Electric Radio Kings and I had the LLC 
uh, and um, he didn't want to dissolve it. So I, I had no really, I had really no choice. But I'm glad we did because when we announced it, the reaction was awesome. And it's been just an amazing, this whole last 2020 was really great year. But despite everything else that was going on. Sure, sure. All right, Sean, you pick up. What were you, where, where were you here? Well, so my story is not as long as that. I didn't get to play LA guns and stuff like that. I flew a little further under the radar the last 30 years. Yeah, but you got a kick ass Kiss Psycho Circus platinum or a gold award behind you. Yeah, yeah. You want to hear the story on that? Or well, you we'll, to... get, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay, so, so I grew up in South Dakota and um, I'm a Vikings fan. Yay. Or. Yay. Or I'm sorry to hear that. It depends yeah, on. We always say that. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, graduated high school at 17, decided L.A. was where I needed to be. So I jumped on a plane and came back in a couple of weeks with my tail between my legs. <laughs> 17 year old kid from South Dakota has zero business going to Los Angeles by himself. None. And that's like it tra takes tremendous balls. Anybody that did that. You know, I salute, like, it took a lot of guts to to do that, to just make that effort to go, you know. Did um, you know, did you know anybody, Sean, or did you yeah, just? I, 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 so my sister and her husband, he was Air Force, and he was stationed in uh, Victorville, I think. And um, so I went there and kind of made Victorville my home base. But that's a hell of a commute. Well, I mean, again, I'm 17 years old. I couldn't even rent a car. You know, I was, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I spent the most of the time hanging out in Victorville. Right. Grilling steaks and drinking Coronas, you know. Right. But uh, I, I had done the cover band thing forever, toured all over the Midwest doing that, played all those Minnesota haunts, you know. And, and uh, then a friend of mine was moving to Vegas and um, said, you're never gonna amount to anything. If you stay here in South Dakota, you gotta leave. So I'm moving to Vegas Friday, it's Tuesday, let's go. And uh, I threw my threw a suitcase together and away we went. And that was 25, 26 years ago. And when I got here, I had an original band called Lazy Jane. We put a record out. Didn't really do much outside of town that much, but we played here quite a bit. And uh, then I started getting into some of the shows here on the strip and stuff. I met Ron Keel and I was in one of his bands. I was in that country superstar show that he was in. And then um, he had, it, uh, when he dipped his toes back in the rock scene, he created a band called K2 and I was in that. And we went and played Rocklahoma, and that was the year that the big storm came through and wiped all the stages out and all that. Yep. We were doing a, us and Black and Blue were doing a meet and greet in a tent when that happened. And the stage fell on the tent that we were in. Oh, wow. But luckily we all got out, nobody got hurt, but it was, that was scary. Total mayhem in, in the blink of an eye, you know. Um, so then, uh, you know, I've just been playing around town a lot. I play in a band called the Stony Curtis Band. And that's a three-piece blues rock original band signed to Shrapnel. And I've been in his band for, what, eight years now, probably. And um, that's Stacy and I have just met each other through, you know, the, the local scene. And we did a couple of shows. I'll add that Sean and I played in a, a country uh, a tribute a touring country tribute show called Nashville Stars. And that was a lot of fun because, uh, you know, I got to know Sean uh, uh, a lot better being on the road with him, but getting to play with him. So when, you know, I replaced the last part of, of that lineup uh, in Electric Radio Kings at that time, I, it was, I, I didn't even think twice. It was like, I, I have the guy. I know the guy. He's perfect for this. Uh, and it was Sean, you know, he's been blessed to, uh, you know, very easy to play with and uh, just a great asset. So that pretty much catches you up. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's, we've, we've had a lot of musicians on this show and 
I love hearing the, the stories behind the scenes like this, because inevitably they've all got similar stories like, oh, you know, we put this together and then this imploded. And, you know, whether it was the lead singer or a lead guitarist or whoever woke up one day and said, I'm not doing this. And then you're you find that other person, you finding Sean and go, that's just it. It seems like that's when bands really happen, when you don't really have to seek out an audition and look for when yeah. you can just go, I know the guy or I know the band name or, you know, you don't have to convince somebody to be in the band. You know, when I when I talk to clients, I'm always like, well, are you a weekend band or are you doing this for a career? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with either way. Right, right. But, and, but you can't be a weekend band no. and think you're going to do everything else because right. you sit here and go, well, we can't go tour because my drummer's got a side gig to pay his rent and he can't take time off. Well, I'm like, right. okay, then this isn't a career. Yeah. And that was the problem, too, uh, my, with uh, Electric Radio Kings. I had four other guys in that band that they really didn't want to do it. Like, they didn't have the drive. Where it's crashing wayward, I found four of the most driven guys, all with the same like minded thought process, uh, musical style. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it came together just, it was like a godsend. It was it's, it's such a blessing, you know, uh, such a night and day for what I went through for three years with the arcade, you know. So, so Sean, you, you're also have been involved in um, a Kiss Night in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, Stoney, the guy that I mentioned whose band I play in, him and I and Kay Caruso and Morpheus Black actually started that. But they, uh, Todd Kearns, believe it or not, another Vegas guy, um, Todd and Stoney and Kay, and they were hanging out at a bar one night and they're like, we should uh, have a jam night, kiss jam night. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stoney's like, well, if we're going to do it, we should charge something at the door and do it for a charity event. Well, that kind of mushroomed into, you know, what is now Kiss Night at Vegas, which we've done in about seven, seven or eight years. Um, but year one, we did it, well, we've done all of them at Bant here in Vegas. And year one, it, the line was wrapped around the building all night. You couldn't wow. get in. It was insane. We had, I mean, we just thought we're just going to throw a Kiss logo up on stage and play Kiss songs tonight, and hopefully some people will show up. And it was mayhem. And now we live stream it, and there's a we extend it out into the parking lot. You know, we rope off half the parking lot and make a beer garden out there and live stream it out into the parking lot. And now it's raised thousands of dollars of money too for you know kids without music programs. So yeah, so so all the money thing. that we raise goes to this the Clark County here in Vegas, Clark County School District, and we've raised well in excess of a hundred thousand dollars that we've bought instruments for the schools here. Wow, good for yeah. you. That's a that's incredible. We've done a couple of kids tribute albums that uh, we've sold, and again, all the proceeds go to that. We just we're right now we just recorded Black Diamond. Stoney and I and a guy named Keith Robert, guitar player here in town, and um, Jeff Duncan from Armored Saint yep. was singing it. And you want to talk about the perfect Peter voice, Jeff Duncan. He sounds exactly like it. So the, that, we're going to release that song here pretty quick. We also did a video for, on the second, yeah, the second tribute record we did, a version of I Still Love You, and we did a video for it. We built a tank and the whole thing. We had the last two shows that we did, we had a tank on stage that we built. It smokes and shoots confetti out of it. The whole nine yards. Gotta get it's that thing to shoot beers out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kiss Night's very dear to my heart. That's I'm pretty proud of that project. And, you know, again, it started off as just kind of something fun to do for one night. And now it's, you know, it's a 501c3 with, you know, a big bank account and lots of sponsors. And it's it's really become something. It's unfortunate that with everything going on right now, you know, the schools aren't open and we haven't been able to do one now for a couple of years. But 
we'll, we'll get it back and we'll get some more dough rolling into the schools there and buy some more instruments for them. That's awesome. I, I, I love, I love stories like that. I was just chatting with somebody who runs a charitable music program out of Kansas city. That's all about raising money and buying instruments for kids in the Kansas city area. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. And I, we've even talked about taking this to different towns, you know, taking the core guys and then getting a whole bunch of local musicians and doing them in different cities and raising sure. money for that school or that County or whatever, you know, but yeah. We've been talking about doing that since you know, maybe the second or third year of this. I think that would be a lot of fun to go do that. So how, how are you, I mean, obviously nobody's really touring or playing right now, but how are you balancing crashing wayward and kiss night in Vegas? Is it, is there much of a time conflict going on right now? No, not really. Kiss Night um, is kind of on autopilot, you know, and we only do one show a year. And so when we have, we, you know, we've always booked that date maybe six months in advance and we start planning it and put the show together and all that kind of stuff. But it only takes maybe a couple of months really to put to put it together so you know the, the rest of the time is just that's when we spend the time contacting the schools and the principals and finding out what they need and going and acquiring the instruments and all that kind of stuff you know? so we got a lot of um album awards be, behind three of us mark's got a probably had mark's actually got some on a, on another wall down there oh and actually if i were to take down the posters behind me you'd see i i think i've got 20 some along the wow walls yeah it's pretty uh, insane. so so let's let's start with you sean what's the story on the psycho circus because so, because, because i i can i can tell you th that was that was during the time i was working with them and i remember i was at the madison square garden show where those were brought out and given to the band members on stage those exact the, ones that exact design yeah yeah so they they had like four of them i remember seeing them backstage in a dressing room four of them unboxed ready to go out there it's an impressive award it's big yeah. it's heavy um and they didn't make a ton of them like that because they were very few and far between so here's the story so katrina hits and everybody's doing fundraisers for Katrina victims. And on eBay, WRIFF, the rock station in Detroit. WRIF. Is that I'm what it is? Oh, yeah, not I'm, two S. WRIF, yeah. I'm in Detroit right now. You are? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that, okay, so that's whose award that is. Is it really? Yeah. So they they put all of their gold and platinum albums that radio stations get up on eBay auctions for Katrina. All the money went to Katrina victims. And I spied that thing and I'm like, well, I gotta have that. So that is sweet. I love the frame on it because it looks like a it's, uh, I mean it'll kill somebody if you were pulling off the wall and hit them with it. It's it's heavy. It's heavy, it's thick, it's, it's yeah. it, you know it's a real heavy wooden frame. Yeah, they 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 went out in designing that one, but like I said, not many of that version were made. I've got a Psycho Circus Award, but it's just, it's the traditional one. It's like the kind you've got behind you, Stacy. It's just a traditional plaque award. Yeah. A little, a little more Detroit lore, uh, because Doug Podalva, the main DJ here, uh, kind of poobah at the time in WRF, he did um, Kisses uh, uh, when they announced the, when they announced Psycho Circus, he did the the big national radio thing that he interviewed them and uh, didn't, all that. I mean, you might know this, Mark. Didn't didn't RIF or somebody in Detroit play Psycho Circus early and get a cease and desist from the label? You know who did that, don't you? <laughs> and it wasn't WRIF. Hold on, was it? No, no, that was because uh, that was me. I gave it to uh, I gave it to the local radio. I did that with. Uh, Carnival of Souls too. I got a season to <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a friend. I had a friend who had a friend at uh, at the radio stations, and uh, you know, I'm like, hey, this needs to be heard. So I brought it over there, and 
played it. Matter of fact, on Psycho, they played Psycho Circus, and I think I made them play Within because I really like that song a lot too. That's so, a great song. The, you know, and for those who don't know, I mean, for for those young listeners of ours, <laughs> just hold on, that, Mike, just so you know, I have a copy of the season. Do you? I yeah. mean that 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 was Bring that it. was that was the time when radio still mattered. First of all. And radio still played new releases and radio would always, especially if there was a competing rock station in town, one of them would always like to get some new music before the other station and they'd go all over it. And always, I mean, whether it was Kiss or a big Judas Priest album or Guns N' Roses or whoever it was, there's always somebody who got that song played it early and then the label immediately sends out a cease and desist saying stop playing that you can't play it a week early you gotta wait part of me is like yeah that's all planned out mike that, mike do all it. good for pr least, don't you get at least two of them for it to matter and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah inside joke yes. a little inside joke little inside. um but i i i always thought that kind of stuff was cool when a radio station would get a cease and desist because i mean and literally sometimes they were playing like off of the cassette advance tape that, that somebody that's gave exactly, them that's exactly what i used it was a fucking cassette really yeah that's awesome so if i you, remember correctly when i did the when I did, because I think it was on the Bear, which was uh, the, it was the old Z Rock, and if I remember correctly, because it was just it was just we went in there. I went with there another friend, and I think he did transfer my cassette to a DAT to use it. To oh, broadcast. I'm sure he did, but still, you know yeah. the the original. I mean, I was there the whole time, but, you know we were there for half an hour, and then, you know he's like, okay, you got and I, you know I wasn't paying. I was just happy. I just thought it was fucking cool, you know. And um, but yeah, that was a that was a crazy day. Leave in the so, parking lot thinking people are following you. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get whacked now for playing this. I just thought it was funny. I don't know, I gotta kick up. <laughs> so cool. so so Sean, you got that off of eBay? Yeah, yeah. So I you know you can put in the proxy bid. So I did that. And then I think it was um you know that the the auction was ending at like four in the morning or something like that. So I got, got up to make sure that nobody was gonna outbid me, which you know they they never outbid you till the last minute. And so it's getting down to the wire and all of a sudden I'm double what I had originally put in for the proxy. And now it's like a lot of matter of principle. Nobody's getting this but me. <laughs> I don't care how much it costs. Bam, 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 bam. And uh, I actually, I don't have bid, one. Bid, bid. That's uh What's that, Mark? I said, I don't have one for that record. Really? Yeah. Uh, I've got pretty much all of them. Um, all of them that were, you know, issued, but I don't have one for that. One of my favorite ones I got uh, a couple years ago um, is a Canadian. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, one of our former guests who I was on the show, I um, got it from him. Um, good friend, Greg. And, but I got a, uh, for the, uh, what do you call him? I got a promo. Uh, uh, in Canada, the, rock the nation live dvd set whatever you know and i got a double i'm gonna go get it just so you guys can see it's pretty fucking cool because it's like I, that's one of the, the only awards i don't have hanging but it's in the other room i'll go get it see, wow you're, 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 you're getting mark to get up and go get something he doesn't need that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very and, special and, and and most of mark's uh, not i i'm probably should say all of his are like awards issued to people in the kiss world like to J.R. Smalling and and people cool. like that that had their awards and they would sell them off to collectors. So that's where Mark's acquired a lot of his one of a kind awards. That's great. But yeah, that thing showed up at uh, at my house maybe two months later. You know, all crated up and everything. That I was living in a condo and the front doorman had to bring it up in the elevator. He's like, <laughs> "What is this?" I could barely get into the elevator. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. I'm like, wow, I didn't realize it was this big. Dude, check this out. This is I don't know anyone else who has anything like this. Is that fucking that's sweet? Nice. Oh, that's it's nice. That is cool. Wow, that's yeah, really nice. It's just cool because for what it is, it's a DVD award and it's from Canada. I just thought it was really fucking cool. So yes. All right, that's my show and tell for this. So Stacy, what have you got behind you? Um, let's see if I can pull that up. Uh, so 
on the, well, I should say there, um, that was a Christmas gift. Uh, my buddy, Bobby Blosser's rat drummer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, he gave, um, he gave that to me for a uh, Christmas and, um, you know, for a short time, it was, he'd put a band together calling it rat. So it was kind of a, a gift for playing with the tunes, um, you know, touring, um, doing that, uh, which I, was, was a beautiful gesture, you know? Oh yeah. Um, it was cool. We played uh, uh, this really big show in um, uh, Tacoma. Was it? No, not, not Tacoma. I'm sorry, Spokane. Uh, we played the uh, arena there. And um, it was kind of right before Christmas. And uh, he had those for all the band members. So uh, oh, wow. that was really cool. Then the uh, other one is a uh, the billboard a plaque for um, uh, Lesser Great Kings Back in Black uh, for Breaking Top 30 um at number 28 cool and, um i've got another two in the queue that i need to get it done as um la guns hollywood forever actually when that album came out on cleopatra it sold a ton the first week and actually entered uh, 24 on billboard um i'll sell rush's new record i was like what <laughs> um because there had been such a gap between albums for seven years that when it came out, everybody just bought it like the right. first week. So uh, I got to get that one done. And then there was another one I forgot that uh, um, was made aware of was uh, VH1 had put this like uh, acoustic series thing out of acoustic songs that were redone the band's hits. I think it was called Metal Mania Stripped or something. Oh, yeah, you know, I think I remember that. I think I have a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah, there was two they put out, I think, yeah. Uh, anyways, one of them, Andrew, not, like, was seven. It sold a shit ton. And it was actually seven, and I was like, what? Really? So uh, I got two more that I'm going to got to hang up. Cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I think awards are the, the best memorabilia collectible i agree uh you yeah. know they look great you know so i'm i'm hoping that at the end of the year we'll have one for crashing wayward that's the goal um you know you know part of me so many bands now i mean kiss is doing it but a lot of bands are doing it now where they're actually starting to sell riaa awards with a fan's name on it like you can wow. go to kissonline.com and for like 275 bucks, you can get a rock and roll over platinum album. And wow. it's got- I, I do like, cause I'm a geeky collector. I, I don't have any of those just because I'm a purist and I'm, you know, it, but I put it, I always say this, stuff. I don't, I, I think they look great. They look amazing. They, I, they, I, I, I agree. If, if you have one, you spend what you spent your money wisely. Hopefully you're happy. And all that. But for me, I collect like the floaters, the original, the real, so, the real so, ones. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and those were far more than two hundred seventy nine. <laughs> but yeah. I, I just like those. Plus, but, you know, there's history to them. You know, I've been fortunate to get some uh, ones from ex, you know, kiss some ex kiss members, uh, road crew guys, managers, you know, that kind of stuff. And for me, that's you know, and some of my some of my favorite ones that. Casablanca, before they got their official RIAs, were giving out awards to, like, again, staff members and stuff. And I have a couple of, uh, I think my Hotter Than Hell, it looks like an RIA, but it's a Casablanca award to. Wow. It's, again, you know, that's just the stuff that I like to collect. And, and again, I, I never look down at people and go, oh, yeah. You know, like I said, those those new awards that that you can get on Kiss Online, I think they fucking look awesome. Yeah, they do. But I, you know, for me, that's just not something that I I collect. Um, yeah. I remember um, this was kind of cool. It's like I um, um, years ago became good friends with um, Tommy Lee's sister Athena, and I just remember going over to her place for the first time, and she just had this m monolithic wall of you know platinum frame discs of course from her brother you know and it was just like whoa it, it just looked so amazing like from floor to ceiling right. you know uh it was it was really cool yeah you know i i 
I'm I'm like Mark, you know, the, the new awards that you can buy look incredible and they're amazing. But to me, there's something once once they are selling a true RIAA hologram award, it sort of takes away the legitimacy of the real people one. in the business who actually did something to get an award. If yeah. that makes sense, you know, yeah. and again, I'm not taken away from somebody who's got it, but you know, you got that award from Bobby because he wanted to give it to you and he controls who gets them. It's yeah. not like anybody can just right. go on a website and buy right. hey, 10 order, awards uh, out of the seller. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm, I'm so proud of the awards I've gotten with my name on them because they were, there was a reason for it. You earned them. You, you, you know, yes and no. I mean, it's, you know, they give them out like candy to a lot of people, but still there was something that was special about awards. They, the access to them was restricted. You kind of had to know somebody to get an award back in the day. Now, yeah, you can just go to a website and fork over your $300 and in a couple of weeks an award shows up with your name on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing with the hologram ones. And, and, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have some of the later day ones hologram, but you know, my original ones are all floaters. And again, yep. you know, that's just how I like to collect. Doesn't mean that you have, you know. <laughs> and, and, and when Mark refers to floaters, that's the typical award that's behind Stacy or, or like this award right here, you know, just the, 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 it, it, I don't see a floater on your wall, actually. Well, I've got uh, – actually, that's an old picture. But they are, as in floaters, meaning the, the artwork, the image is kind of floating under the glass. You know, a lot of these newer ones, like, like the Psycho Circus, they, they've now spent a lot more money creating incredible artwork on them. I've got a – I've got a Kiss Symphony Award here, which is big like that one. And it's got incredible painting and artwork behind it. But again, there's something about those old school, like Mark's talking about, the old school simple floater awards that you look at that and you go, that's rock and roll. I keep looking up here. I don't, I don't know, should I say this or not? But I have another one, the platinum one hanging right up here in front of me. That's a, a Nickelback one that a friend of mine gave me that used to work at Roadrunner. I will tell you, I do not understand the the hate for those guys. I mean, this is just as as a music fan. And am I a big fan? No. Do I have I ever bought any of their records? No. What's so fucking embarrassing it's, about your music fucking played on the radio? Jesus weird. Christ, I'd fucking take that ten out of ten times. <laughs> I don't. I, I look when those guys come on the radio. I listen to it. They're good. I don't. Yeah, they got you know. a bunch of good songs. I don't. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I never understood I, that. It's just like. Where did that like, come on? Where did that come from? It makes no fucking sense at all. Did, did they, did they, did they become the new winger where winger was the band that, you know, Beavis and Butthead hated. And when winger went out of style, Nickelback took their place. I don't I Both of those. I'm like, Mark, I don't care. I mean, if it's your music, great. If it isn't no big deal, but there isn't a single musician who wouldn't take that sort of attention and say, hey, if they need a drummer, I'll fucking go sit in. Are you fucking <laughs> yeah. That's awesome? You know, by the way, I love your, uh, your kit there behind. Well, thanks. Yeah. This is my little studio that we're in here. We demoed a whole bunch of this fresh. Uh, again, if you could yeah. see through that before you get, I've got my electric kit set up back here too. So that almost looks half acoustic. What do you got? Uh... No, it's not. This it's half acoustic. And the little screen I'm looking at. So, so, so let, 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 let's talk a little bit more about Crashing Wayward. So you guys have just released uh, the first single, your first single. What's, what's your plans for more music, for an album? You know, granted, it's a little premature to talk about touring, but, you know, are you looking right. at shows? What's, what's the band's plans? We're done. <laughs> yeah. One song, one, one, one song was all you wanted to do. <laughs> uh, the first weekend in April, we're actually uh, flying to LA to uh, uh, film the next video for 
our next single, which is a song called Disco Kills. Um, so we're gonna um, do that with a uh, different director, a guy named uh, Vicente for a company called Industrial Films. Um, so we're really excited about that. We have another song that's uh, in the can as well called Stranger Days. Um, and then once the video's filmed, we'll start, go back in the studio with our producer, Mike Gillies, um, who's an amazing producer, Metallica's studio engineer and live engineer for since the load record, actually. Um, so we'll go back in with Mike um, this spring and we'll record another three songs. And then we've talked about putting maybe an EP out or taking that and shopping it and then start playing probably this fall, you know, late summer. Uh, God willing, if we can. Um, so we were just keeping this momentum going because the reaction um, from our single Breathe has been just incredible, you know, uh, as Sean can attest as well. And I, I think we just went into this, like you know, we knew we recorded a bunch of great songs. That was the single. We knew it was really, really good, but we had no expectations. So um, to read, you know, Peter getting uh, Chris Cornell references and uh, everybody saying love the, the, the band's just incredible and the production's amazing. And um, it's, yeah, it's been great. And, and, and full disclosure, I've, been, I've done some work with you guys and your first video um, has been picked up and selected by a couple film festivals. Yeah. Which yeah, is pretty uh, freaking cool. Bengal, India and uh, West Palm Beach. So complete opposite. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ends of the spectrum there. Um, and we're, we're still writing, you know, uh, we'll go over, to, I'll go over to Sean's usually once every couple of weeks and uh, we start, you know, we're all doing, the great thing about this band, there's four writers in this band. And uh, so we'll, we'll do a demo, a bunch of ideas. Everybody's, you know, got their workstations and recording stations. Well, um, you know, Pete's in San Diego, Carl's in LA, um, Dave's in Ohio and Vegas half the time. So Sean and I'll just kind of take the things and then we'll jam on stuff and kind of work some ideas. And then, you know, uh, we'll just lay stuff down over there and then send it to the guys and then Pete will put his thing on it and then we present that to Mike. And then we take it from there and then he just dismantles everything. So. You know, let, let, let me ask you about that. Not that this is new to the music industry or even within the last year because of COVID, but what do you, how do you, how do you like, how do you deal with band members being spread out all over the place? Would you rather have everybody in the same town where you can get into the same room and record or does that not matter really anymore? Doesn't well, I would really... like everybody to be here, but it doesn't yeah. matter. You can do yeah. it remotely. Yeah. Five years ago would be a little bit of a different story, even 10 years ago. But now it's like, you know, there's the technology and you have just such capabilities of working remotely. Um, but, uh, you know, nobody's too far. I mean, Carl's in LA, he's four hours away, and Pete's only four or five hours away. And, you know, uh, Dave lives here sometimes, sometimes he's not, and he's in Ohio. But, when we rehearse, you know, everybody just either gets on a plane or drives over and bada of thing, off, off we go, you know, so. Is there is there any sort of energy or emotion that might be lost when somebody's sending you their music and then you're listening to it and recording on top of it and they're not there? I mean, is, is there anything to that old, God, we got to get everybody in the same room and you're feeding off of everybody? I mean, is that is that important? I don't think so because it's like you, you we, it's all about communication, you know, because um, it's like, hey, what do you think of this? You know, if Sean lays down, so what do you think of that? Oh, it's great, man. Well, but okay, can you try change that or vice versa? I lay a guitar melody down or hey, let's try this. So we communicate a lot. So it doesn't get lost in translation as opposed to all being there. And then when we do rehearse or we're working on new songs, it's like, We'll, we'll try it the way we've done it for coming in as a band. And then we'll kind of say, hey, let's try to change that part. So it's really about communication, you know? Um, and I don't know, it works well for us. Maybe other bands, it might not, so. 
<laughs> Let's see. It just seems like that's the normal for most bands. Again, even pre-COVID. I mean, COVID yeah. really pushed it upon everybody. But even pre-COVID, it was like, as you said, the technology's here. It's so easy to just drop box a file to somebody that's, you know, completely uncompressed and high quality and, you know, no, no more burning to a CD and FedExing it yeah, and waiting right. for it to show up. And But I mean, we still get together quite a bit like this. We're doing three days. We're going in the studio for three days this weekend. This weekend, yeah. To, to work on some more of the demos and bring a mic in to help do some up a little bit and get a game plan going for after these, the you know, next couple come out. So, you know, th this will be a fun three day weekend for us to, you know, hang out and sit in the studio and bang some stuff out. Yeah. You know, besides, you know, impacting your ability to perform live, how has COVID impacted you guys? Cause you guys kind of came out right in the middle of it. You know, was there a concern of, there's a lot of bands that are like, well, maybe we sit this out and wait six months and see if it gets better. Do we wait a year? Do we wait? Do we wait? I mean, how did you approach that knowing that literally, you know, it was a year ago, basically, you know, right now that things just shut down completely. Yeah. Well, I think once everybody realized like, hey, we're not playing. Okay, that sucks. But everybody else is in that same position. So how can we take the, the time to really make it the most out of this time? Because it was week after week after week. And then, you know, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And it's like, okay, we really aren't playing. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so let's spend the time just writing, 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 and, and get this everything ready for, you know, it was to reinvent electric radio kings, but then when the name changed and then we got Sean, to me, it was even more exciting because everything was leading down this path that was meant to be. So it just, it kept me going um, for sure, working on this, all this new material and watching the band develop. Like just, it kind of, every, everything kind of came into focus. It's like, you know, it's got a little bit of Stone Temple Pilots, a little bit of Rival Sons, a little bit of U2, a little David Bowie, um, you know, a little bit of Guns N' Roses, a little bit of this and that. And it was just so awesome to have the time to let that happen, which maybe wouldn't have if it wasn't for COVID. So I look back and, yeah, it was a tough time on everybody, but it was really kind of a blessing, so... That's my take on it. Good, good. You know, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I, I like seeing bands who have approached this pandemic the way you did. I mean, I've, I've had a couple clients who basically just completely shut down and like withdrew and are hiding from the world. Yeah, I can't do that. And, and it's like, like, I don't know. I mean, you know, listen, aren't you creative? Doesn't that creative bug in you want you to go do something? Okay, you can't play live but there's plenty of other op options out there. And like, I built, I built a house and we moved into it one week, one week before the shutdown, we were boxes to the ceiling when everything came crashing down. And, and I, you know, this room was going to always be my studio, but I had never had a full blown studio in any place that I'd been before. So I'm not well versed on this yet, you know, so I took the last year sitting in this room learning how to engineer and work pro tools and do everything else. That's so, for so me, awesome. For me, it's this like is great. This is a year. Yeah. It's like you, it's like people either just, just became recluse and like, you know, the guy who Sean replaced, he said to us, I'm not leaving the house. And he wasn't doing anything. And I was like, that doesn't work for me. I don't want to be working with somebody who's just going to shut them, their lives off. You know, so... And, you know, in, in, in some way, that might be a good thing for you guys as in the band, because maybe if COVID wasn't here, he would have been part of the band. But maybe a year from now, something else would have come up and would have become an issue. So I, I sort of feel like COVID has forced a lot of bands to sort of, you know, the saying shit or get off the pot. You got to make that fucking decision right now because yeah. 
This yeah. band is moving forward with or without you. And yeah. there's been more music released in the last year than I've experienced in many years. I, mean, I think we use we're using TuneCore to, to distribute this, the music, and there's a month waiting list yeah. to get your music put out. They're so overloaded with, with new releases and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think everybody had that mentality. And then, you know, as Sean was saying, to, to he's like, I'm going to buy this spaceship <laughs> and figure it out. I mean, that's awesome. You know, that's like you, you, you know, you put yourself, it's like, I got time. I got time to, to try these things. So uh, I think that kind of mindset and that kind of creativity really brought all the best out in this band. Um, so, you know, we feel very blessed to have had that time to really explore, hey, what are we about? And just all these just amazing things have happened uh, since then, you know, with the writing and uh, reaction from Breathe. And, you know, the, the, new, the new stuff that's coming out that we're writing and the next few singles that we're releasing, they're just as good, if not better. So, you know, cool. I, I'm looking forward to uh, that, too. Before we wrap, because I know you've got to run, Stacy. Sean, one one final question: Did you have some involvement with um, the whole Badlands operations? Because Chuck was on the show here, huge Kiss fan. Did you have any Kiss encounters through the the whole Badlands? I have dozens of Kiss encounters, but yes, and I was I was a huge part of the Badlands project. Um. Chuck's other company, his main company, is a, a loan company called Dollar Loan Center. And I worked for them for 18 years. I just left a couple of years ago. But Chuck and I grew up together. We moved to, that's the guy that brought me to Vegas. That's oh, okay. Said, you need to get off your mother's couch and come to Vegas because you're never going to amount to shit. He's, he's the guy. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I talk to him every day. We're still best of friends. You know, we hang out all the time. And, and uh, but yeah, that whole Badlands thing. I mean, that's what this shirt is from. That's this is the Badlands show. Awesome. But that, that was yeah. the the acoustic show, right? Yep, yep, yep. And Chuck lined it up. I mean, I Mark, you'll. I played with the band. I played with Kiss at a rehearsal in L.A. one time. Nice. Chuck lined that up, and Eric gave me the snare drum. I one of the Eric Singer signature series sure. drums off the kit, and I mean. I've done a, a lot of stuff with the band. I get, I got a lot of. Stacy, you can leave. We can talk for another two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I was definitely was part just... of Badlands. I was there from the get go, from the day that Chuck walked through the office and said, "I got an idea. Follow me to my office." And he just, Chuck's one of those guys where he just, he's like vomits ideas, and you just got to start writing because he's. And it's insane. I mean, when he goes, we're going to open up a pawn shop and we're going to buy a radio station and we're going to put it in the pawn shop and we're going to somehow turn the pawn shop into a concert venue. So we need a bar and we need, let's have a cafe in there and a deli. And I mean, it just, he just went and went and went. And every day the ideas got nuttier and nuttier. And you're like, there's no way we can pull this off. Nobody in this team has a retail background. Nobody's worked in a pawn shop none of this stuff so he hires the guys from that actually they're from detroit those pawn shop guys that had the tv show yeah he hired them to be our guys that taught us how to run a pawn shop and all the all the stuff in the pawn shop was on wheels and we literally we did a couple of dry runs but we could turn this pawn shop into a 16 person concert hall in 30 minutes from full-blown packed pawn shop to a state-of-the-art facility in 30 minutes. I mean, we, we had a permanent stage and a massive light show. Well, you've seen the pictures, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, show. it's so, the whole so back impressive. wall was a video wall. I mean, it was, it's, it was massive. Was, I, you know, I, I, I think, Sean, we, we should probably have you back and we can just do a Badlands episode <laughs> because... You're right. There's, there's, there's so many stories for that. 
Yeah. Well, Tom was there too. So, I mean, yeah, we'll Tom, get... Tom, Tommy went up to the acoustic show and I think he went to a couple of them. Yeah, I, I had him come over. He hung out with me at uh, the Tom Keeper show. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I got him into that show and yeah, that, I mean, that docking reunion that yep. happened, you know, they came in for a week prior to that and rehearsed at Chuck. Chuck had a, uh, like a school of rock that was tied to the boys and girls club and they had yep. a big concert hall inside there. And that's where Doc and rehearsed for a week prior to those shows. And I sat there and watched every second of that go down. Wow. I, I was in the hotel lobby with Mick and George when Don walked into the bar. We were sitting at the bar lobby and Don, Don walked in and Jeff. Was that where they showed them all rehearsing in that big place that was there? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. And, and so I was standing right there and I'm the guy that took the picture that was like the first picture of the four of them that went out on, on social media. I'm, I took that picture and we were just sitting in the hotel lobby at the bar and man, that was, that was an intense week. I, well, I, was, I, I was ready for some throwing down, but those four guys got along swimmingly and they laughed and joked and just had a blast the whole time. There's so nice. much, there's so much rock history that was made and, and happened at that facility. I mean, from, you know, uh, yeah, except there. What was that? Except played there. Yeah, yeah. Except, I mean, you know, I worked with except for a number of years. They, they would do maybe four or five shows in the U S maybe. Yeah. And one of them was at Badlands. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, Chuck's one of those guys where he's like, this is what I want to do, and I'm just going to do it and get out of my way because I'm going to make it happen. And and he did. He sure he did. did. I mean, it's it's. We won't get into what happened, but it's sad that it's sad what ended it, what happened, and that that it's not there anymore because it was literally a shot in the arm for metal. We were I mean, getting metal in the U.S. every single day of people begging to come play there. You know, they're like, I don't know what you're doing. And the, the fact that I'm going to play a pawn shop is, is ridiculous to me, but I want to play. I mean, we had Ryan Sons there. We had Joan Jett. We had Disturbed. I mean, crazy bands playing in a pawn shop that held 1,600 people in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Yeah, I know. Cool. And they, they wanted to come there. It was insane. Yeah. 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 Let's, let, let's, let's definitely – get you back on and we'll do a whole bad, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get you and, and Chuck for a return and it'll just be a, let's, let's reminisce about the whole Badlands rock and roll experience. Chuck's going to be our manager. He just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I mean, yeah. I mean, when we had Chuck on the one thing that I took away from it was, damn, this guy just lives and breathes rock and roll. He loves his music. He loves his bands. He he's, he's like us. He's a fan, and he just got into a position where he could actually do some really incredibly cool stuff as a fan. Yep, absolutely. He's got a ton of stories. I mean, that so, crazy, so crazy stories. Why don't, why don't you guys tell all of us and everybody watching and listening, where can they get more information on Crashing Wayward? The main set website, crashingwayward.com. We're on all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Our YouTube page has got breathed up there. There's also a cool little video um, that we just threw up there of Pete kind of describing the writing and creating of Breathe. Yeah, of course, um, awesome singer. Um, yeah, and uh, of course, all the band members, uh, David Harris, Carl Ray there, myself, Sean, Peter, uh, Summit Ross, uh, uh, singer, um, you know, uh, all on social media heavily. So uh, lots, lots of easy ways to discover the band. But uh, yeah, Breathe, uh, you can download it on iTunes, uh, Spotify, all the streaming sites. And uh, of course, uh, video, uh, which is garnered, you know, close to 14,000 views in like two or three weeks, which has been just amazing. Um, so, you know, click on it. Yeah. <laughs> click support, away. support them. I mean, you know, that's the one thing about all of us here on three sides. It's like support bands, go support new music. I mean, if, if you want new music to continue, you got to support the bands that are making it. 
And, yeah. and that doesn't necessarily mean spending money. Cause I understand not everybody's got money to throw around. You can support that band crashing wayward by Just subscribing, yeah. subscribe yeah. to the YouTube channel, follow their Spotify, you know, Go on your playlist. List. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, that I can, I can tell everybody having worked with all sorts of bands that means a lot to them. It really does. Sure, we all want money, but again, we understand not everybody's got money to throw around. So, yeah, leave a comment, like the Facebook page, share it. If you watch the video and you think it's good, share it onto your whatever network you like to use and just tell your friends. Yeah. Cool, guys. Well, I got to bow out, but uh, Michael, great to see you. Mark, good meeting you. And Sean, I'll see you Friday. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. You too. I always love talking to musicians, especially musicians like Stacy, who've lived it, done it, seen it. You know, when he's telling the stories of the band and, you know, the lead singer quitting after a show, you're just like, God, there's another one of those stories that we've heard so many times. And, you know, hearing him describe how, the new band came together and just knowing it was right. You know, I've never been in a band. This is something you can probably relate to much better than I could, but it is one of those things where you just know when it's right. You just know it. Oh, for sure. I, I, I know it was funny. I was just kind of sitting back and listening. I, I, again, so much of that is so easily relatable. I've been mean, playing my whole life too. I mean, I know what it's, you know, going into the studio. Matter of fact, I'm getting together Saturday with uh, my uh, old guitar player to possibly re-record a bunch of stuff. And um, the guy who did the last Left for, D rec Left for Dead record, he's going to, you know, help us with that. And I know I've talked to you, you know, about it and, you know, that sort of thing. It's just, it, you know, it. I always tell people it's, uh, you know, it's that like the old blues song says it's in them and it's got to come out. You know, there's that, that line boogie from boogie chilling. Yeah. And you, I, I always loved, uh, maybe it's Booker T who, uh, got out. Somebody's going to go, Oh no, it's not. I can't remember what it is, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I love the lyric of the song. It's like, uh, you know, daddy's on, you know, whatever, telling uh, the, the kid to stop doing it. And the mother's like, no, you can't, no, it's it's in them. It's gonna come out. I know. Nothing to do about it. And That's... and I'm I'm the same way as those guys because I remember when my kids were young, I tried not playing. I, I, it it's not an option. When when you when you love music so much, and um, matter of fact, I I just had a talk with Keith, the bass player from Left 4 Dead, um, this morning. We were talking because he's uh, you know he was in my old band too, and. We're, you know, we're kind of venturing out a little bit, doing something, some old music. And, but that's what we're talking about, you know, in, unless you're a musician and there's, trust me, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's cool. It's almost like the same thing with the record awards and in, in that same sort of analogy. I've been playing drums now since I was, you know, 11 years old. I'm 55 now. I've never stopped playing. Um, but since basically, since I got into a high school band, I've been playing in bands that did their own music. I don't get me wrong. I've done some cover shows and helped bands out and said, and yeah, all that stuff. But I was never a covers guy do the cover circuit. It just, that has zero appeal to me. Don't get me wrong. My once, it was funny because I, I wanted to jump in, but since those, those were our guests, you know, I let them go. I do the same thing. You know, I do my once a year, sometimes twice a year kiss gig. Mm -hmm. We, we pack the fucking place in an insane, you know, it's crazy. Um, pack the place, have a lot of fun. So, so you know, it's funny. I was, that's what I mean. I was just sitting there listening to these stories because I could so relate to them, but man, you know, you saw us I and mean, we, we had a whole lot of stuff with our last record tons of great reviews and all that stuff and it's just that's what you get off on you know what i mean the fact that somebody adds it to their spotify list and somebody and, just know. says hey i like it 
We, yeah. I, I mean, I still see when when somebody will comment on one of our videos and ask, "Who's this Left for Dead? This is really good." And you you know you jump in there, and it's like that. That's what it's about, right there. Yeah. That moment is it. I, look, I make tons of money. I shouldn't say that. I make I make I make good money doing what I do for a living. Um, I, I you know concrete and asphalt isn't my passion music is um so you know i would love to be able to make <laughs> make a living doing that it's just not how life is you know especially now at an older age you I, you know what it, there's a there's a there's a time in a band or people like myself and the guys that i jam with when you're a kid you always think you're you do it because you want to meet chicks and and you know make money and be a rock star but when you get to my age you finally realize you know what i do this because i love it and i can't fun. yeah it makes you happy yeah, yeah i can't imagine well it, it, and going back to what you started with it's because it's in you and it's got to come out and that's the thing i've said this so many times on on both my podcasts i cannot understand these musicians who are sitting here going nope i'm not going to record another album again because the internet killed the music business and I can't make money off of it. And I'm like, well, yeah, that sucks. Clearly that sucks. But if you're truly an artist, don't you have to record just because you have to, you need to write, you need to record, you need to play. Isn't it in you? I look mean, I would what, assume it what is. Alice Cooper's doing. Exactly. Alice Cooper puts out a wreck, cheap trick, you know? I, I look our costume crusaders i love them but i don't understand them at times now especially in the midst of all this horrible crap that's been going out how oh, fucking sweet God, would yes. it have been just even if they would have re-recorded something or you know i i had uh, but on the last kiss cruise i had an opportunity to ask paul stanley a, a question and i did and, and i kind of did it the question i asked was uh, I was kind of because I we have a similar matter of fact the last last show I, I mentioned uh, Mott the Hoople and I knew that he liked Mott the Hoople too. Well, for those of you who aren't big Ian Hunter Mott the Hoople fans, although I would tell you to check this song out, um, it's called Saturday Gigs. And when Mott the Hoople was calling a day, they released it as a single, their final goodbye to their fans, and it's a great song. And I know Paul likes that song, and I'm like. Hey, you know, why don't you guys do a Saturday gig sort of tune? And Paul just flat out said, not interested. And and God bless him. You know what I mean? I if 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 put it this way. You know how I was just saying a few minutes ago, if it's in you and it's got to come out. Well, what if it's not in you? What if you just, you know, and, and to be fair to Paul, Paul's putting out, you know, Soul Station. Maybe he doesn't want to put out a, a maybe, final maybe something something else is in him. Maybe rock and roll hard rock heavy metal isn't in him anymore that's fine i just if you're a musician there's got to be some creative bug in you that you just can't stop well also too you got to remember there's different things you know i i write i you know uh, i've always contributed to the songwriting um musically lyrically whatever way i could arrangements um i've always been a hands-on guy in every band that i've been in you know and, and i i'm that's again that's today i was working on stuff you know before i came downstairs um that's i that's the that's the crazy part in all this what you just said we talked about earlier i want people to hear it I want to, I want to play it. I would, there's nothing like it. And, and unless you've done it, 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 it's hard to explain. You know what I mean? You'll, you'll, you'll literally, it's like, well, you, you know, what, what, what I would tell people is everybody has something they are creative about, whether it's music or painting or knitting or crocheting or, or building sports. a model railroad or sports, all of, e even writing computer programs. It's all an art. It's all a skill. And, you know, I, and I remember when I was really into building websites, I just wanted to, listen, going all the way back to Kiss Otaku when I launched that. That's what it was. I felt so open in my ability to create and express something that I wanted to build Kiss Otaku 
every single freaking day. I'd come home from working eight hours at my job and I would sit down in the living room for another four hours and just work. And I'd work through the weekends and everything else because I just felt like I needed to get it out of me. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't not do it. And I think musicians should be that way. And it disappoints me when I see the musicians, to your point, our Cape Crusaders who we love so much, but there's plenty of other ones out there that have made the same comment where they're just like, they don't want to. And I'm just like, how do you not want to? Have you just lost that spark? You know what? If, if, if although maybe we could do it somehow, I, I don't know what, well, I'm sure Lisa and, and Tommy could really contribute too. It, you know, it's funny. It's one of, I always say, you know, I'm a huge fan of this band, a huge fan of this band, that band, but it really is true. I mean, I buy, I love the new Joyster Cult. I love the new Alice Cooper. You know what I mean? I, although it was 2012, I thought, um, the last Van Halen album they did was was fantastic. Yeah, yep. it, my my point is in the, in the in Deep Purple still recording with with Steve Morris. Guys, there's so much fucking great music that these legendary bands. Cheap Trick, they got a their new one uh, coming out next month. Yeah, my point is this: there's so much great music by our favorites or the people we grew up with that's still out there. Um, you know, it's funny, our, our old guest, uh, uh, you know, when Ted Nugent shut up and jam, although there's one after that. But I mean, if you want to just check out a great fun rock and roll song, a song called Shut Up and Jam. And it's that whole sort of thing. You know what I mean? There's so much because people will just go, oh, I know, whatever. I just know Cat Scratch Fever or Blue Circle. I just know Don't Fear the Reaper. I'm like, get the new record. It's that good. The, 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 the sad part is there's there's really... You have to look for it because it's not going to be inundated with you. Yeah, I mean, you know, we there's no, kids. there's no radio anymore. There's no MTV. You're not well, going to see Blue Oyster Cult touring Kirk arenas. You know, the you open it up and I'm like, oh, there's the new Van Halen or there's the new Cheap Trick. Yep. You know, what I mean, and add for it, and well, you don't, you're not, you don't see it anymore. And it's again, you know what, like like our guests, um, like my band, like it, <laughs> we're putting this stuff out. Hopefully, people dig it. Um, you know what I mean? And, but I, I think that goes for deep purple too. They want everyone to hear it. You know what I mean? They know that. Um, I love, I love when, and people, I am me, they're like, Hey, you know what? I thank you because you've talked about, this is a great record. <laughs> What's Moxie <laughs> mm-hmm. it's a Canadian hard rock band from the seventies. Check it out, man. Just go on YouTube. And then once you get Moxie one, you're probably going to get what want Moxie two, which is a red coat. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, there's so much great stuff. And then you know, then fast forward to now, it was fun. It was great. I, I love the fact that our guests were talking about bands like Rival Sun, yeah. Who are just there's so much great stuff out there, and uh, yeah, it's not going to come to you in many ways. Well, you gotta yeah, get- I mean, as 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 we said in the interview, go support these bands maybe crashing wayward doesn't connect with you but there's another band that will go support them however you can show them some form of appreciation that they're still being creative i mean and and for me excuse me you know that's when somebody like cheap trick who has never given up i sit here and I, i i look at cheap trick as one of the hardest literally hardest working bands out there and you at some point I sit here and go, they should have thrown the towel in a long time ago. Cause I remember when they would sell out arenas and now, you know, they're fourth on a bill opening for freaking poison, a band that was influenced by them. Part of me is like, that's gotta be tough, but they love the music obviously so damn much that they just keep doing it. it they just want to play live anywhere they can with anybody they have to and recording another album is that album going to sell a hundred thousand copies probably not a chance in hell but that doesn't matter because they're still doing it and i just want to sort of say thank you to you guys for not throwing the towel in 
for still having that spark to create music that I can listen to. Well, I'll tell you what, for what it's worth, um, God bless Gene. I love, I lo- you know, granted it's two years old now, it's three years old now, but I love the fact that he took the time to do the, uh, the Gene Simmons vault. Fucking 11 CDs worth of fucking music. And I mean, look, there's some pretty bad turds on there too, but there's some fucking hidden gems yeah. as well. Songs that you're like, God, I wish they would have developed this or you'd hear parts of other songs. Matter, I, you know, I don't know, um, because a lot of you guys are, you know, a lot of people that follow three sides go on my personal Facebook, but I just posted something. An old demo was one of the very first things Ronnie James Dio did with, with Iomi when they first, put, I don't even think they were, I don't know if they were still going to call it. Black oh, that, that's the track that just sort of kind of. Yeah. Flatback is the yep. name of it. And, you know, I was just, again, searching for music at lunchtime and I just, that's what I mean. That's what I do. I love you. I'm like, okay. Or if I'm, you know, my, the guitar player on left for dead, my friend, Mike, he, he's loves all these bands. Whenever he talks about them, I, I try to, you know, okay, let me check that one out. Uh, you know, uh, I got, you're going to for, forgive me for this, but a, a really cool guy who watches our show. I forget your name. I'm so sorry, but he's from Australia. He sent me some great Australia pub rock and I was fucking totally getting into that. And Ash, um, when we were on the, on the kiss cruise, he gave me a bunch of, uh, uh, Scandinavian metal. And I love that. I love the fact. You know, it, that- it's, it's funny. You brought up Australian pub rock because I, I kid you not. I wasn't familiar with the term and I'm not familiar probably like most people in the U S with much Australian rock other than what broke here in the U S I about three weeks ago, I went down a Spotify rabbit hole <laughs> There's a lot of, of, great of Australian pub rock. And I was like, and, and I kid you not, I discovered this band and it, people will probably laugh who have known it. There's this band called cold chisel. Oh yeah. Crap. These guys are Great freaking stuff. phenomenal. How did I not know about this? How Who's did the, I hold on? The singer went to go. The singer went and did something. I mean, he had a U.S. hit, I think. Yeah. Cause I dig them too. Um, Cause I, I, I stay in touch with one of our past guests, Peter Hoffman from, from Australia. And I was telling him about that. He kind of was chuckling. He's like, yeah. And, and I'm just like, good Lord, there's whole, compilation discs of australian pub rock and playlists and and all of this music is phenomenal and i I I don't care if it's 30 40 years old it's new to me i just discovered a brand new band that's got this entire catalog of music check out some angel actually and it's the in the u.s but they in this case they call them angel city but uh you know if you just want to uh take a long line um marseille there's a go to angel city and punch in marseille like the french city that song marseille is so it's like one of my favorites i fucking love that song that uh you know that night attack is a really good record and again and you know it's funny with with nicholas from everything kiss we you know he knows i'm a i'm a geeky australian rock guy i, I like so many of those bands you know and just to let you know um some of you watching the show probably don't know but the what was the big it was a semi radio hit for uh for great white was uh uh, face the day face the day that's that's fucking angel yeah angels that you know a lot of people don't know that again on my personal facebook sometimes i get in those and i know mike you've seen i I get in these for a month i'll do like all cover songs and whenever i list that one people like I, did, I thought that was great white. I'm like, no, oh, no, oh, no, it, no, that's Angel City. Yeah. Great. I mean, you know, I, you know, one, once you go down that rabbit hole, especially of Australian rock, good Lord, they have a huge rock scene there. I mean, I just got done working with this band out of Australia called Taste. Yeah. Oh, my. They're, they're ancient. They're, they're ancient. They, you know, they, that matter of fact, that was one of the that was one of the 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 the, the, the discs he sent me. You yeah, know, it was it's really like, good. You got to go down, and it's like, how did these guys would play with Queen? They were back in the seventies. They were talked about as being right at the same level as Queen and these other bands. And you know, unfortunately, if you're an Australian band and you didn't break in the U.S., you were not heard of. 
until somebody else covered your tune and gave you credit in an interview or something like that. But yeah, I mean, I, I if, if I would say to somebody right now, anything, go check out some of that great Australian pub rock. There's just check out taste, check out cold chisel. There's, there's just a plethora of bands and I'm not talking like three or four. There's dozens, dozens, yeah. dozens of the radiator, bands. the radiators. The, yes. the first radiators records really good. Yeah. And you know, and it's, it's great hooks, great pop, great melodies, uh, great lyrics. I mean, it, I sit back and go, this should this has been all over the U.S. radio. This should have been all over the U.S. How it didn't happen, oh, well, one I'll of those you, unknowns. We were being for, and look, and I I like these bands too, but we were being force fed Journey, Ario, Speedwagon, and Pat Benatar. Yeah, which the Radiators didn't sound anything like that. You know, um, like you said, uh, I'm, I'm trying to Angel, the Angels. That's it's so funny because whenever you say all Americans think it's Punky Meadows, man, no, 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 totally different, totally different. different. That's why they had to change their name in the U.S. only to Angel City. Um, but yeah, you, you got to check that stuff out. Yeah, By the way, Mike, uh, the, my two favorite hockey teams are playing at seven thirty. So, so let's let let let's wrap this up. So, uh, you know, homework. Um, go check out Crashing Wayward is what I would first mm-hmm. say. Let us know what you think. I mean, they've got one song. You you know, just go look Crashing Wayward. Breathe. It's everywhere. You don't have to pay if you don't want to. Watch it on YouTube. Listen to it on Spotify. I'm, I, I, you know, I don't know if we recorded that part of the interview. I, I've been on, on vacation. I came. I didn't know anything about our guests today. I don't know any other songs. So I'm. That's one of the first yeah. things I'm gonna do. Go, go, you know, and and, you know, what are they like? Listen, if if you love Stone Stone Temple Pilots, they're more of a modern sounding rock band metal band you know it's not it's not an old school deep purple type of sound check it out and then let us know come back and literally it's going to take you a few minutes to listen to one song that's it you don't even have to, there's no album one single is all that's out there let us know what you think um and uh then i think the other one would be give us an australian pub rock band that you like or that we should check out we, and if we, you guys don't don't know the the whole pub rock thing is really just kind of classic rock in some yeah. ways. It's got a little bit of a power pop tinge to yep, it. A lot. Yep. Of it yeah, it's very it's very commercially acceptable. It's not like uh, we're telling you to go listen to some death metal here, you or know. or just the opposite. It's not some you know shitty fucking lame half ballady stuff no 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 this is this is it's it's pub stuff you want to listen to when you're in the pub when you're that's exactly it it's it's got great guitars it's got Mm -hmm. rock and roll guitars but it's got great hooks great melodies great vocals great performance um you know if if you're a fan of kiss which obviously you must be you will almost certainly love or Or cheap Cheap trick, trick. especially. Yes. You will love some form of pub rock. I will say, go check out cold chisel. So go, go there. There's your homework. Come back, leave us your answers. What you think of that. And um, we've got guests next week and I don't know, maybe it's just the two of us. Of course, the two of us are the only ones that matter week in and week out on this show. Everybody else just kind of comes and goes as they're, as they feel. Well, you can, Talking about these two other people, I have no idea what you're talking about. So you and I, every fuck. <laughs> well, we got to we got to give Lisa at least a name credit here. She is hot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, um, Lisa. so subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify. Subscribe on iTunes. That's it. We appreciate everything. We'll see everybody next week. Heyo. <laughs>